If you want to learn how to crochet amigurumi but you are an absolute beginner and you don't even know the materials to start, then this is the right video for you. If you're new here in the channel, I am Bianca from Crochetnix. I'm an amigurumi book author specialized in methodology of teaching and master in teaching and media education. And there's been almost nine years that I've been crocheting this cute amigurumi here. In the Amigurumi Academy series, I'll teach you how to crochet an amigurumi from scratch to absolute beginners. But first, we need to know the materials to start, right? And yeah, I know it can be confusing and quite overwhelming. There are lots of materials in the market and we don't even know where to start, the good ones, what to buy. And that's why I created this video because I'll share with you like a very short list with the most basic materials that you need to start including choosing the right yarn and right crochet hook because let's be honest these are the most important things that we need right so let's start talking about the materials now and i separated everything that we need to start crocheting our first amigurumi bowl so the first thing that we need is polyester fiber this is very uh, soft and this is essential to stuff our amigurumi. It can be very cheap because I usually purchase a pack with like 500 grams and I pay seven euros, at least here in Finland. But um, this type of polyester fiber, if you purchase like a 500 gram package, um, it can last for a long, long time. And I cannot even count how many amigurumi bowls you can stuff with just a seven euro package okay so this is the first thing that you need the polyester fiber the second thing that you need is scissors and you don't have to buy a special one you can use any scissors that you have at home i have this beautiful one here um, that i've been using just for my amigurumis this is like a very good quality but i also have this one very simple I don't even know when I bought this one. I have this for more than 10 years, but this is more than enough for your amigurumi bowl. The third thing that we need is tapestry needle. And I have quite a few here with me and let me show you. Um, let me try to focus my camera. Okay, so you can see here that I have lots of different um sizes and also types of tapestry needle this one is a bit more curved as you can see this one is thicker like way way thicker than this one um, i also have this one that is curved you can see it's not like very very curved but you can see that there is like a curve here and it's very sharp at the bottom so there are lots of different types of tapestry needle and this is something that can be very cheap of course there are expensive brands in the market but as you're starting with amigurumis you don't have to buy the expensive material having one of the cheap ones is already enough to start and actually these uh, tapestry needles that i'm showing you right now are the cheap ones that i bought when i started my amigurumi journey nine years ago <laughs> there's been a long time and honestly i have better ones right now but if i want to i can still use them because they serve their purpose okay okay bianca you might be asking um yourself right now how do i choose between a big one like this and a small one for me it depends on the uh, yarn thickness that you choose we will talk about yarn later but just so you know, this one, like you can see that the hole here is very large. And if you have a thin thread like this one, you can see how thin it is. You don't need like to use a big tapestry needle like this. And usually my stitches are so tight that if I use a big tapestry needle like this to fasten off my amigurumi in the end, it will create holes. So this is something that we don't want, okay? That's why I usually use smaller tapestry needles, like these ones here. You see that I think the hole is like the same size. What changes here 
is the size of the tapestry needle itself. And this is the third material that we need. So now let's talk about stitch markers. I have this beautiful box here. This is from a brand called Clover. I can leave the link for this product in the description because these are my favorite type of stitch markers. Um, this box comes with four different sizes. So it's good because for a thin yarn like this one, I usually use the smallest uh, stitch marker size and for a thicker yarn like the plushy one that I have here, I usually mark my rounds with this big guy here. So this is why I like this box very much and especially the small ones because they don't open the gaps between stitches. I will explain what this means when we crochet our first bow together, okay? What does it mean to say gaps between stitches if you are not sure what they are? But just so you know, um, as I said, this box is very good from a good brand, good quality. But when I started crocheting amigurumis, I used these cheap ones. You can find these like in AliExpress and yeah, I don't know. They, they are very, very cheap and I used them for like four or five years. So you can start crocheting amigurumis with this type of stitch markers if you want, because they are cheap. And our main goal here is to learn how to mark the stitches correctly, mark the beginning of the rounds or the end of the round. You will learn that how I do the process, how I crochet, I usually mark the, I always, not usually, I always mark the first stitch of the round. So creating this habit of using the stitch markers is very, very good. And I also have this one. Um, this is good because you see that the, the wire is like very, very thin. So it doesn't open the stitches while this one is very thick. And this is the biggest issue with this type of stitch marker here. And this one is also very cheap. You can use it if you, if you like. There are some people who like to mark the rounds using a piece of thread, and this is also a possibility. I don't like to do it myself. I think I got used to the stitch markers, but this is a matter of preference. If you don't want to spend money with the stitch marker, it's totally fine. I'll teach you how to mark the rounds with a piece of thread, and that's totally fine. But if you want to purchase, and you want to create the habit to use stitch markers as I did, I totally recommend you buy one of these. And if you want to invest a little bit more, you can buy one of those from Clover. Now, something that people are usually really confused, crochet hooks. I brought a few examples here just to illustrate the different crochet hook types. This one is my favorite, by far my favorite, um, crochet hook from a brand called Tulip. Okay, I will talk about the, the crochet hook size later, but this one is my favorite. It costs, I don't know, 12 to 15 euros. It is very good and I know it's expensive, but this is one of the best. Well, I say this is the best in the market, at least for me, the best one that I have ever tried. And it makes a big difference because the metal here is very good and it slides smoothly when we crochet. So this is why I like this brand so much. But if you don't want to spend like 12, 15 euros in a new crochet, in a crochet hook like this one, you can use a cheaper brand. As I said, um, this one is my favorite from Tulip. This one is very famous among crocheters as well. This is from a, the Clover brand, the same brand from the stitch marker. This is very good, not my favorite, but I know many crocheters, experienced crocheters who have this one as their favorite. This is also a bit more expensive. I don't know how much it is right now because I have this for like quite a long time, but if I, was going to say like which ones are the best. Um, this tulip and clover crochet hooks are more expensive, but they have very, very, very good quality. But if you just like me when I started, don't want to spend too much money with crochet hooks, you can always purchase cheaper ones like this. I like having like this rubber part 
um, because it helps with my grip, the ergonomics of the crochet hook. This one is very thin. It's hard for me to hold, to grab the crochet hook like this, but it's a possibility. If you don't want to spend too much money, you can buy one of those. And just so you know, this one is from a Brazilian brand and this is very, very cheap. I would say that, well, I paid it in Brazilian reais. You can see that it's a bit old here, um, but converting to euros, it will be like three euros. It's very cheap. And I used this crochet hook for like four years. I crocheted with this for four years. So it's enough to start. I mean, after four years, I started selling my products and receiving lots of orders. So I needed to be fast. I needed better material. So that's why I decided to invest in a better crochet hook. And I bought this tulip and the clover one to test which one was my favorite. But if you want to start and you want to start with a cheaper material and I mean, you don't want to spend too much money on it, you can totally purchase like cheaper one, two, three euros crochet hooks for you like this ones. And of course, I saved the best for last, <laughs> which is also my favorite topic, talking about yarn types. And I have a few here so I can give you the proper explanation. And as I said, I'll try to give you like a brief explanation about yarns and why do I recommend the type that I recommend and things like that. So cutting a long story short, my favorite type of yarn is 100% cotton. And I have three examples here, actually four examples, but I'll leave it. This one is also 100% cotton, but I'll leave it aside because I brought this one for another purpose. So I have these three um, different brands here, but these yarns, they are very similar and I usually use them interchangeably in the same project. Um, they are, you can see here, 100% cotton, also mercerized, which I don't want to explain here in this video because it will be too long. I like this mercerized aspect, it's a little bit more shiny. Um, then this one, for example, that is not, I don't know if it's clear with the video, maybe with this one, because the colors are similar. You can see that this one shines a little bit more and this one has more like an opaque, hope this is a word, <laughs> um, but this one shines a little bit more. Okay, talking about um, the yarn type. Okay, so these brands, they are very famous among amigurumi crocheters. This is Catania from the brand Schackenmeier. Schackenmeier? This is German and yeah, I don't speak German. Um, Hobby is a brand from Denmark. Is This brand's cotton 8.4 is my favorite. And also uh, Katona from Schrepius. I don't remember. I think they are from the Netherlands. I don't remember right now exactly. But all these yarns, they are 100% mercerized cotton. The non-mercerized version is also okay. But I do recommend you choose a cotton yarn because they are easier when you start. You can see the stitches really, really well when you crochet with this type of, of yarn. And I brought two examples here to illustrate what I'm saying. Um, I have this beautiful um, mouse that I crocheted with this yarn here. I'm going to talk about it, but it's way more difficult to differentiate the stitches when you're crocheting and I don't know, sewing and doing some embroidery. This is way more difficult in the beginning while with this one that is 100% cotton, you can perfectly see each of the stitches in this amigurumi bowl. So this is why for beginners, I totally recommend starting with 100% cotton. I know some people who say that they started with this kind of yarn and they managed to do it. And I always make this joke that if you start with, I mean, you never grabbed a crochet hook before and the first project that you did was with this kind of blushy, fluffy yarn, you're a genius <laughs> because it can be really, really difficult. Um, so if that's the case, you want to start with this one, go for it. I don't recommend because I think it's easier with the cotton yarn. So as I was saying, these ones are 100% cotton. The ones that I recommend, they are a bit thin. I know 
So some people who are starting with amigurumis, they don't, they like to start with a thicker um, yarn, so it will be easier for them to crochet. And that's why I brought this one here. So you can see here that this one is a bit thicker than this. Let me see if it's clear with the video. Yeah. Not that much. They are very different, but for some reason in the video, it's not that clear But you can choose like a thicker yarn like this one But as long as it's a hundred percent cotton or at least a combination of cotton with acrylic And you can always check in the yarn label. Let's check this one because this is easy It's written here like hundred percent cotton while this one let's check where is it oh yeah it's written here like a hundred percent something i don't know in which language cotton cotton so yeah it's a hundred percent cotton is written here in lots of languages and we will also find the same information in this one a hundred percent masterized cotton so always look at the label to check this one I brought as an example it's from the same brand as this one this is called honey bunny from hobby and this is a hundred percent polyester so when you see these big fluffy yarns they are usually a hundred percent polyester and I don't recommend because it's they have some how can I say it I mean it's very tricky to work with it and there are some tips and tricks to work with it to make our lives easier with this type of yarn you can work with it it is possible and you can make beautiful amigurumis like the mouse that i showed you before but it requires some different techniques which is why i don't recommend that much it's uh, at least not for complete beginners okay so for now we talked about cotton yarn and polyester but i still have to talk about acrylic I don't have the yarn label for this one and I don't crochet with acrylic yarn there is a reason for it and I explain the reasons why I don't work with acrylic yarn in another video I'll leave the video in the description and also here in the card so you can check later I don't want this video to be that long but there are a couple of reasons why I don't like acrylic yarn and one of them which is a spoiler from the other video that I'll share with you is because you can see this thin threads coming out of the skein of yarn and I don't like it it's okay when we are knitting and I'm a knitter too just so you know this channel is about crochet but I do know how to knit and it's something that I also like doing in my free time but when I knit scarves hats things like that for me it's fine to work with acrylic although there are other reasons why I don't I don't buy this type of thread um but for amigurumis i don't like it that much because of this thin threads that come out of the yarn i again brought the amigurumi ball here so you can see um you don't see any thread coming out of the ball it's very steady so i like this this aspect in my amigurumis this is one of the reasons why I don't work with acrylic, okay? Um, this is, at least for me, totally fine for knitting, but not for amigurumi. And some people don't like 100% cotton like this because I have to warn you, cotton yarn has no stretch. So if you crochet for hours straight, which is not recommended at all, um, you can start to feel some pain in your wrists and your thumb for example so first things first it's also always important to give yourself a rest from time to time but for that reason also some people prefer to use um, some yarns that are a combination of cotton with acrylic right now I don't have any yarn here with me that are a combination of cotton with acrylic um, because there was a brand that I really liked from Brazil and for me, they had like the perfect combination, but there are other brands um, that sell internationally and they do have this kind of combination. Um, there is a whole playlist here in the channel about yarns and yarn types, yarn brands. I can also leave the link in the description if you want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, but just so you know, I have this yarn here. It's not a cotton with acrylic, it's cotton with linen. Um, but it's also like a combination of cotton with something else and I brought this one just so you can see 
that um well actually this is something that you cannot see i can only explain it is a little bit more soft than the 100 cotton and it has a little bit more stretch than the others and i crocheted this beautiful amigurumi here <laughs> um if you want the pattern after you learn how to crochet i can leave the link in the description so you can check it later um, but i used 100 percent cotton for the cup and here for the the cappuccino because it's a cappuccino mug i love cappuccino <laughs> um, i used this yarn here so i combined different yarn which different yarns i'm sorry which is something a little bit more advanced um, but just so you can see that Although it's a combination of cotton with another type of yarn, there is no thread. I mean, you cannot see threads coming out of the yarn like we can see with acrylic. Maybe here in the video it's not that clear, but if you go to a yarn store and you ask for some help or you check the label and you see acrylic, you know what I mean when I say thin threads coming out of the yarn. So now that you know everything that you need, you know all the materials, you can go to a store, purchase your yarn, crochet hook, stitch markers in case you want them, tapestry needle, stuffing, well, scissors I think you don't have to buy another one, you probably have a good one at home, and that's it. Let's go to the next class in which you will learn how to crochet your first amigurumi bow. And this is the basic material that you need to start crocheting your amigurumi without spending too much money. And now, let's crochet our first amigurumi together. <laughs> 